What's happening, fam? LAR movement still moving. Book is entitled Lessons from a Non-Custodial Father at Amazon Kindle and Create Space. A link will be in the description box below, as usual. This video is entitled You Don't Deserve a Messiah. I'm not calling myself a messiah. This is just an analogy. Um, I think about just being a content creator and, and, and thinking about history and looking at this thing over and over and over again. Um, America is based on capitalism and Christianity. America has, this, you know, has a fear of black people and having a messiah. And America also has a Messiah complex where everybody's looking for someone to come along and save them. And I think about that, that movie, uh, I think Pursuit of Happiness, when Will Smith's son in the movie, well, his son, really, his son, but was talking about the analogy when the person was out at sea and they were asking God for help and, and they had one thing and it was like, and they shunned it away like, I'm waiting on God. Another thing came. Shunned it away, I'm waiting on God. Another thing came. Shunned it away, I'm waiting on God. And they died. And when they died, they met God in heaven. And he said, I was waiting on you. And God said, I sent you three people to help you. You, you, you didn't take it. And this is why I say you don't deserve a Messiah. Because what's going on is, you know, people want to look at the Bible. And waiting on the day for Jesus to return, right? But Jesus, but, but God that you know who sent you Jesus, sent you people in your life that embody the principles of Jesus and, and, night, and, and kindness and righteousness, and y'all don't do right by him. But you deserve a Messiah to come and pull you out this time. Like, God has sent you people in your life to help you, but you haven't done right by them. And this is a general statement, you know, so it is what it is. So, and those very same people who are looking for a Messiah, who are looking for some, who, are, who, who have been looking for somebody to come lift them up and pick them up and save them. For the most part, those type of people are not good Samaritans to other people. See, our, it makes more sense to have a billion good Samaritans than a hundred messiahs. And the question is, how come there aren't a billion good Samaritans? Because the bulk of people are self-centered and lazy. So, you know, you don't deserve a messiah. You know, and in the family, in the family and friend sense, we won't help save our own family and friends. But we're looking for a Messiah to save us. Not in, in, in the biblical sense, it's talking about God is watching and God sees all. You know, he got the whole world in his hands, right? He knows everything. He's omnipotent. But he knows your heart, too. He knows that, you know, you don't deserve a Messiah to come back to help you. Because you don't really want anything but a free pass like God is synonymous with Santa Claus you just want to sit on his lap and ask for a gift and hope he give it to you and you feel happy for a couple of days until New Year's hit you know um, you don't deserve a Messiah because you sabotage the very people that can help you you love the people that hate you and you hate the people that love you but you're looking for a Messiah and that was and that could be no you know and, and, and look at this historically Everybody that tries to do good by somebody, you know, when we think of um, the general, um, I, was about to, I was about to say paradigm, but the, but the general profile of a martyr is a person who died doing right by everybody, and they got so mad that they had to kill them. So you want somebody to come and sacrifice their life because every because everybody want to be on some bullshit. But you think you deserve a Messiah. You know. Some of us are really Messiah haters. Because people who come along in our lives that are good Samaritans, we have a problem with. 
you know, and that's what I was saying a minute ago. You know, a person who you who you deem to say they ain't shit, as long as they're fun, you you entertain their company for an eternity. But a person you deem maybe a good Samaritan or, or has your best interest at heart, the minute they do something that you don't like, you write them off for an eternity. But you deserve a Messiah for that? Uh, you know, <laughs> it's funny how easily, because Messiahs for some odd reason, or people who, are, who can be considered Messiahs or can be be considered good Samaritans in your life. It seems like they can easily offend you. You know, you know, Martin Luther King easily offends people, ironically, but they they, they whitewashed him to a sense where he's he's a pacifist. But Malcolm X looks offensive. You know what I'm saying? The Black Panthers, offensive. You know what I mean? They found they found ways to, to make people offensive. You know, we talk about <clears throat> Nat Turner. Oh, what he did was so offensive. Was it really? No. Like, <laughs> wow. Like, wow. Because, you know, the ideology of this world is backwards. You know, you can't be a peaceful human being in life. Like, you have warmongers who who, who want to be good Samaritans, and they get mad. You know, like we had talked about this. Um, you know, when the Black Panther came out, the Killmonger versus um, um, T'Challa. But in a sense, you know, using a biblical reference again, I mean, Jesus was supposed to be the Prince of Peace. You get what I'm saying? People have a problem with peace. So if you got a problem with a, with peace, then you don't deserve a Messiah. And, and and this is what I mean. I'm using analogies right now. And I'm just saying what I observe in life. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't need the semantics. Uh, you know, I don't need, you didn't say this word perfectly. You said Jesus and it's not Jesus. It's this. If it's that. You know, it's the, see, this is the point. You don't deserve a Messiah because you can't get down to the to the bare bones of what is the bottom line of a situation. It's always got to be tailor made for everybody's perspective, you know, at the same time, but individually. A Messiah don't have time for that. Either you're going to get on or you're going to get off. You know, people are too entitled for a Messiah. You know, I want a Messiah to come back, but he got to look the way I want him to look. He got to say the words I want him to say. He got to do the things I want him to do. And he got to get me out of the situation that I want him to get me out of. But the situation that I want to stay in, I want him to leave me alone in, in, in that situation. Because he ain't got, he ain't got, how, how dare he think I'm going to stop doing this. I just need him to save me from this, 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 this. And when it comes to this shit, he need to mind his fucking business. Okay. Just saying. You know, you don't deserve a Messiah because you're not willing to make a sacrifice. You know. You know, we don't deserve a Messiah because we're pimping the the, the idea of a Messiah. And no, I'm not just talking about black people. No, I'm just talking about people, okay? You know, and, and that's another reason why we don't deserve a Messiah because, you know, if a Messiah looks different, oh my God, you know, oh, he came into my life, but look at him. That's not how it's going to look for me, which what I, which what I meant by the tailor-made thing, you know. Um... We don't deserve a Messiah because we take kindness for weakness. Like, think about it. If when I use the, 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 the Bible version, you know, of you know, Jesus coming back with a sword in his hand. He tried to be nice, your ass didn't listen. <laughs> he was nice to you. We're gonna kill this motherfucker. We won't be so damn nice. Now when he come back, he coming back fully loaded. 
Yeah. I'm sorry, darling. Can we talk about this, my brother? Brother, no, no, no. I swear to God, I swear to God, I swear to God, I'm so sorry. That's why we don't deserve a Messiah because we we, we want to ex- expect a, a, society, a Messiah to give us a pass so we don't have to face consequences. See, we want to, you know, he died for your sins. If he died for your sins, why you keep sinning every fucking day? Like, damn, if he died for those sins, are you going to respect his death enough to say, I ain't going to do that, though? Nah, you can't do that, huh? You know, you can't do that. <laughs> you can't, you got, he died for my sins, but wait until he see this shit I'm about to do tomorrow. Oh, I'm re- oh I hope he died for this one, because I just invented a new one. But you deserve a Messiah. You know, and, and the sad part about it is a lot of times, I'm like I said, it's an analogy, you know, Messiah and good, AKA and good Samaritan, you know, we treat the Messiahs and the good Samaritans in our life like crap. And then turn right around when they're gone, we miss them. Well, how did you treat the Messiah? Man, let me tell you what I did to that old bitch ass motherfucker. Man, I stole everything from his bitch ass. He was still nice to me. I set him up. You know what I'm saying? You see, I'm, you see how I'm, I'm riding clean on that bitch ass Messiah. No, look at <laughs> man, but he was so good to me, man. I miss that cat, man. He he actually helped me in life. I better myself I, and take care of my family. You know, all I did was set him up to get him killed. I'm so sad. I just... So what about the dude that uh, you snort coke with? Oh, man, we going out party today, man. I'm a, That's my dog. Oh, yeah, man, we snort coke and rob people. We thick as thieves. You thick as thieves? I thought you got robbed last year. Yeah, you know by who? No. Oh, your homeboy that you thick as thieves with. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> you didn't know that? I mean, damn, like, you ain't the smartest of people. You a robber and you didn't know you got robbed by a robber. Okay, whatever. But, you know, this is why you don't deserve a Messiah. This is my opinion, y'all. My opinion.